Rob Liefeld. He is unquestionably one of the most popular artists in comics history. He came up in the 90s at Marvel. Uh, he started working on New Mutants, and it exploded. It became a title that started selling millions of copies. When he relaunched it as X-Force, it sold 5 million copies. That's the second best-selling comic book of all time. He remains a controversial figure. He loves to toot his own horn. But there's no denying that he's popular and he sold a lot of comics. That said, he has his tropes. That's right, this time we're going to look at an artist, look at artwork, and see the recurring themes that an artist brings to the table. Here's a list of tropes you could expect to find in Rob Liefeld comic books. Pouches on arms or legs. A new character that's clearly based off an existing popular one. A new character with the words blood, death, or wolf in the name. Women posed in a way that you can see both their butt and their boobs. A full panel grimace with Way too many teeth. Eyes shut or drawn with no pupil and iris. Huge shoulder pads. Tiny feet or feet hidden by the panel, mist, rocks, and so on. A smooth round blob for either male or female crotch area. Characters breaking through more than two panels in a single page. No backgrounds for an entire page. Ponytails. Guns that look more like round tubes. Character details changing from panel to panel. Copying famous art by others. We're gonna buy a random comic book at a comic book store. I'm also gonna buy some hot peppers. And I'm going to eat a progressively hotter pepper every time I see one of his recurring tropes. Let's go buy some comics and some hot peppers. Pike Place Market is one of the biggest tourist shopping areas in Seattle, but it also has a fantastic comic book store and a robust farmer's market. So I think we can get the peppers we need here. Let's go. Golden Age Collectibles claims to be the oldest comic book store in America, and since it was founded in 1971, they might actually be right. Let's take a look and see what we can find. That was fun. I ended up picking up New Mutants 100. And I also ended up buying a lot of different hot peppers. You can see just a few of them there. This is going to be insane because it goes all the way up to the ghost pepper, which is basically the hottest pepper you can buy. And they say that a single seed will leave your mouth burning for at least half an hour. So... Uh, We'll see how many tropes I hit, whether I get up to that ghost pepper. But no matter what, it's going to be a progressively hotter pepper every time we come across one of his tropes. Our story begins in the underground bunker of the New Mutants, where an intruder alarm is going off. Cable and some of his New Mutants are quick to respond, and if you look closely, right there on panel two, for some reason Cable has a leg pouch. This was something Rob Liefeld is almost the only guy to do. He loved putting extra pouches on people's arms and legs. Fortunately, the first pepper is just a traditional red bell pepper. Uh, on the Scoville unit scale, which indexes how hot a pepper can be, uh, this only gets zero. So I think I'm gonna bite into this like on that uh, old Japanese show, Iron Chef. You ever see that? It's juicy, it's sweet. It's pretty good. The next two pages are a splash page. Uh, apparently there's a new character that's uh, invaded. I won't say his name yet since the characters don't know him. But he's that guy in the white with the big ponytail. So we actually have a lot of tropes on display on this page. We'll start right here in the first page all the way on the left. Look at those tiny feet, especially dominoes. They're not even on the same plane. So I guess that's an example of the second trope, tiny feet. Second pepper is Chile Verde. It goes up to about 1,500 on the Scoville scale. Got some diced here. Just gonna eat a bunch of them. Oh, at first it was sweet, took a minute. Peppery, that's how I'd best describe this. 
there's still sweetness, but there's a slight pepper aftertaste. Not too bad at all, can totally deal with this. We also have the trope of the ponytail. That was something that Rob Liefeld loved to draw on his characters, was ponytails, braids, and this character has both. So I guess that means I'm eating another pepper. I have the Anaheim pepper, which goes up to about 2,000 units on the Scoville heat scale. There's some seeds in there. It's not quite as sweet. It's a little hot. It's a little hot. Um, I didn't think to get a glass of water, but I guess I'll be all right. <laughs> all right, let's keep going. Of course, right here on panel two of this page, we've got this example of somebody with their eyes shut and another person with their eyes open, but no pupils or iris. Guess that means I'm eating another pepper. This is just page two, basically. All right, we're finally at something that's a little hot. This is a jalapeno pepper, and it goes up to about 8,000 units on the Scoville scale. It probably isn't smart of me to take a big bite of this, but that's what I'm gonna do. Ooh, taste the pepperiness right away. I don't remember. Oh, wow. Whew. Okay, I've got a glass of milk. Oh my God. Oh my God. I don't know if you can see, but my eyes are already sort of watering. Okay, we'll try to do one more trope on this page. And that's that Shatterstar... Sorry, that's his name. We'll learn that in a second. He's wearing a huge shoulder pad. Another character design element that Leofeld loved to create. Okay, my next pepper is a Hungarian wax pepper. It's supposed to be about uh, 15,000 units on the Scoville heat unit scale. Oh my god, my tongue is still on fire from the jalapeno, but better to just do it. Okay, I'm taking a bite. I sort of see what they mean by the wax. The texture of the bell pepper is, um, is almost waxy for a second. Oh, oh, it's hitting me. Oh boy. I didn't think I'd need it yet, but I got some bread to help try to counteract the acidic taste in the, in the pepper. Whew, it's so hot. I still have like seven or eight peppers that go even hotter. Oh boy. So the New Mutants try to subdue this new visitor to their bunker and uh, he's a pretty good fighter. But here we are on page five and as Domino starts to fight him, we realize that his ponytail has disappeared. You can just see from one panel he has got no ponytail. In the next two panels, the ponytail comes back. That's another Leofeld trope, is a character design element just totally changing panel to panel within the same page. It's like he could have just looked to the side and said, oh, that's how I drew something. But he just didn't always bother to do that. This is the Serrano pepper, and uh, it goes up to 23,000 units. I think a good rule of thumb is the smaller a pepper gets, the hotter it tends to be. Whew. Oh. Takes a minute to hit you. It's very hot. It's 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 almost a smoky type of taste. It's just like um it's almost like a, a numbness is hitting the back of my throat. Back to the story, Shatterstar and Domino begin fighting, and if you look at panels one, two, and four, they all feature something just slightly breaking the frame. If you're going to break the frame, you have to have a really good reason, and you might only want to do it once per page. I can't think of a great example of a good artist doing it more than one panel per page. And it really gets confusing. Let's go back to that page, and between panels one and two, since Shatterstar is breaking the panels in both, his swords are sort of overlapping. It's just generally confusing. And then his foot in panel two is only just barely breaking the panel. Time to eat another pepper. This time it's the Arbol pepper, and it goes up to about 30,000 units on the heat index. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Arbol. Excuse me, it's getting hot. I can't describe it, it's getting hot too fast. Mm. Oh, I feel it in my gums. I feel like my whole head is warm this time. Oh my god. Shatterstar punches Domino, and now it's Cannonball's turn at a fight. 
And here we are on page eight, and yeah, all of a sudden, the backgrounds disappear. Typically, you want at least one panel per page, usually, to represent a background, at least one. And then the viewer can sometimes use their imagination to fill in what else is going on if you've got a character very prominent. You don't always need to include all the background details. You've got a page like this where there's only checkered lines in the background. If that, it gets very hard to understand the spatial relations. Like, where is one character positioned in relationship to another character? How close are they to, say, an exit or a floor or any sort of prop that might come into play in the scene. So, just just no way to tell in this page. People are fighting, but we have no way of knowing where they are. If you were to only read this page, there's no indication whether they're inside, outside, day, night, nothing. All right, that means it's time to eat another pepper, but I didn't have an ability to get cayenne pepper because it's not in season right now, so I went ahead and bought cayenne Ah, uh, my mouth is burning. I bought cayenne pepper powder because basically all it is is ground up cayenne pepper. Ooh, boy. This is hot, but it's not as hot as it could be because it's dry. Cayenne peppers go up to 50,000 units on the Scoville scale. It's still hot, but here's the thing. Because it isn't the actual pepper, the actual acid isn't uh, sort of spreading around. It, it's just where the pepper touches my mouth. It, it's still pretty hot. It, I feel it. I definitely feel it. Finally, Cable, the leader of the New Mutants, steps in and he basically knocks Shatterstar down with a couple punches. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, there's a cat type of mutant that's hanging out in the, uh, the, the duct spying on the New Mutants. This is Feral. Uh, she's just going to be one of the new characters to the team, but she hasn't joined them yet. Normally this would kind of be one of Liefeld's tropes, because he created Feral, and she's basically just sort of a new version of Wolfsbane, who used to be a New Mutants member. But um, she's already been introduced in a previous issue, so I don't feel like it's fair to call it a trope where she's, you know, appearing in this issue again. This is a kind of confusing page. We're introduced to three new guys, all slightly different designs, but similar color scheme, and you can see that they've got shoulder pads and uh, leg pouches. The only way to really understand this page is by reading the dialogue. They've teleported in. There's, there's no indication of them teleporting, but they've teleported in and they're looking for Shatterstar, the guy that the New Mutants just knocked out. Basically, Three different groups of people have invaded the New Mutants headquarters all at the same time. No, four people, because it's Shatterstar, the people tracking him, Feral, and the mutants tracking her. So four different teams or people have uh, all invaded the, the uh, bunker at the same time. Shatterstar comes to from being knocked out, and he reveals that he's from the same dimension that Longshot and Mojo are from. They're X-Men characters. So this ties New Mutants into that a little bit, basically just creates a new character from that dimension, and they find that they're all basically on the same page. Uh, the New Mutant Boom Boom goes to get a snack, and she encounters Feral. They have a quick fight, but Boom Boom s stuns her, we'll say. We cut back to Shatterstar and the other guys, and uh, Shatterstar apparently has some sort of sensor equipment that starts uh, giving an alert, and those um, three tough dudes that came in invade. The New Mutants are fighting the three generic henchmen. And here's an interesting shot on page 21. I mean, I'm trying not to pick on the art, but take a look at Domino's crotch in this scene. I mean, that is just sort of one flat mound. I don't know what's going on there. He'd do that with men too, so it's not sexist, it's just sort of a thing. But, unfortunately for my mouth, that's a trope. This little guy here is called a Pekin Pepper, and it goes up to about 60,000 on the uh, Scoville scale, so here goes nothing. I don't like the taste of this. It burns. It burns a lot. Oh my god, it burns a lot. Oh, oh, it's sour. I don't know if you can see, but my eyes are watering big time. This hurts. I've been like rinsing my mouth out for like 10 minutes. 
And it still feels like my tongue is being just squeezed tight. The new mutants keep attacking the soldiers and Feral agrees to help them. Meanwhile, the evil mutants that snuck in, and apparently they're being led by a guy named Mask, they decide to sort of stealthily sneak up on the new mutants and, and take advantage of them in the heat of battle. The new mutants do a pretty good job fighting off these generic soldiers, but one of them does manage to grab Shatterstar from behind. And to stop him, Shatterstar stabs... N oh, okay, hold on. Okay, I was trying to read this, and um, I thought that Shatterstar stabbed himself to stab the guy behind him, but Shatterstar seems fine, so I guess he actually is sliding the blade sort of like between his body and his arm and stabbing the guy, which with a double sword has got to be extra tough. The reason I thought that it looked like he was stabbing himself, I recognize this artwork. It's copied from a famous Frank Miller page of artwork from his book Ronin. And in that book, uh, the titular character Ronin does in fact stab himself to stab a demon behind him. Rob, have you had any formal art training? No. And that is one of our tropes. That means I'm gonna have to eat another pepper. This is the Thai pepper. It goes up to 100,000 on the Scoville scale. Just as a point of reference, the last pepper I ate, which has got my mouth burning for like 15 minutes now, was 60,000. This is 100,000. There's a lot of seeds inside, and the seed is really what burns. So I'm going to take a very small bite of this. It's crisp at first, kind of like actually um, a bell pepper. Or, or celery a tiny bit. Oh, but the, uh, the seed is powerful. I'm glad I took a small bite because I can feel it with just the tiniest bite I can feel it. Oh, wait a minute. Mm, there's sort of um, a second burning coming in. Okay. The new mutants, Shatterstar and Feral, defeated the generic henchmen that were trying to capture Shatterstar. Mask and his henchmen choose this moment to get Feral back. But Cable just flat out shoots one of the henchmen in the head. Okay, that's... That's a, that's a new way of doing things. The new mutants used to abide by Professor Xavier's uh, teachings. Uh, basically, that meant no killing. But Cable is a soldier, and he follows a different path. Things are getting a little bit more... Extreme. And here we are, right around page 30, and we have two tropes on display. This page is giving me... Two more bites of peppers. If you go to the last panel on this page, there's sort of a grimace by Cable, and that's got to be more teeth than the average person has in their head. I don't get it. The last pepper, which had me suffering for 15 minutes, was 100,000 on the Scoville unit scale. This is a habanero. You've probably heard of that. A habanero goes up to 250,000. Actually, it has a really good sweetness. I kind of like this. It's just hot, okay? It's just hot. <laughs> what was I thinking? What was I thinking? <laughs> so the other trope on display here is take a look at Cable's gun. That looks more like a vacuum cleaner than a gun. Usually, he drew humongous guns. That could have been a trope that we listed early on. Fortunately, Cable doesn't seem to tote one of those around in this, but you know, take a look at any of these. Like, look at the size of this gun. Right? Uh, what else? Uh, oh, here's Cable with a, with a gun that, you know, what is that? There's a trope. This is a ghost pepper. And that's why I went to the farmer's market. Ghost peppers are not the most easy thing to find. They're basically the hottest pepper you're gonna find. Uh, there are one or two that are hotter, but, um, they're very, they're almost impossible to find. A ghost pepper. This is so hot, it goes up over a million on that Scoville unit scale. The only use for stuff like this is to basically spice things up. Maybe you'd put one of these in a bottle of tequila for like three days. That's it. Not like a week or anything and it will flavor the tequila, and it'll make it very spicy. So once I take a bite of this, I, I, won't, <laughs> I won't be useful at all.
Oh, there's no, there's no taste. No, wait, there's a little flavor. Oh, it's already burning though. It, it's overpowering. I can't, I can't taste anything anymore. Ah! <laughs> mm, mm, mm -mm. Okay. Oh, my throat. <laughs> oh my god, my whole body feels hot now. Oh my god. Beyond even burning, it just tastes like your tongue is being like scraped and squeezed. And your cheeks and your gums feel like they're on fire. Your throat makes me feel like I'm constantly gonna cough. The right side of my tongue feels hotter than anything else. It must have like gone along that edge or something. Like it, it just, the edge of it just feels like it's been just like scraped with a knife. Basically, uh, after Cable shot one of the henchmen, uh, Mask and his other guy left, and now the New Mutants are having a debriefing session where they all agree that they have to leave this area, that it's not safe anymore. Makes sense. They also decide that they're gonna rebrand themselves as X-Force. They're gonna be more proactive. That was the big difference. New Mutants were started as students at Professor X's school. These guys are calling themselves X-Force, and they're gonna proactively go after uh, threats to mutants. Finally, there's a quick prologue with uh, mutant villain uh, Strife. We don't know much about him yet. He's this guy all in uh, metal with spikes. Doesn't seem like a very practical outfit. Seems like that helmet would weigh a ton. He's got a team of evil mutants that he calls the Mutant Liberation Front. So they're going to uh, give safe harbor to mutants. But it's sort of like Magneto taken to an extreme degree. And the issue ends with a weird reveal where Strife takes off his helmet and his face looks pretty much just like Cable's. So this was a long-running uh, mystery. Um, didn't have much of a payoff because I'm pretty sure that no one knew who Strife was when they first introduced him. Uh, but the idea was to guess whether Cable or Strife was a clone. So those are some of the tropes of Liefeld. Uh, wasn't necessarily trying to criticize his drawings. I wasn't saying like, you know, this anatomy looks bad or the way he draws hands, I don't like that. It was more just that these were recurring elements that you could find in any given issue. And the fact that we had like 12 shows that any random issue would feature a lot of these. Leofeld, perhaps more than any other comics artist I know is a, a slave to his style, and his style is nothing more, in my opinion, than a collection of the little mistakes that we make when we try to represent real life. Uh, style can be awesome, and a lot of people love Rob Leifeld's style. I certainly did when I was a teenager. I remember buying X-Force and New Mutants before it. I loved it at the time. I look back, I'm not much of a fan. I mean, look at this Captain America here. I don't understand how somebody's chest, their second pectoral, could go out this far from their head. Look at that. That is bizarre. Not my speed, but it was at one time. And you know what? He still has some exciting ideas. He's outspoken. He, and that's good for the comics industry. It's fun. He's not a bad guy. Rob Liefeld is fun. He loves comics. There's no question that he absolutely loves comics loves working in them. I had fun taking a stroll down memory lane looking at his artwork. I hope you had fun watching me suffer. I, I'm gonna go get a Brillo pad and just scrub my tongue because I am dying here. But until next week, have fun.